Catherine Thompson, Technology Analyst at Edison, and I'm here today with Andy Thorburn, CEO of EMIS, to discuss the company's full year results for 2021. Hi, Andy. Hi, Catherine. Could we kick off uh, with a discussion of the highlights of the full year results, please? Yes, yeah, so 2021, another good year for EMIS uh, Group. So we managed to exceed uh, our board expectations a year for our revenue and adjusted profit, which is always uh, very encouraging. Um, and just a great performance from the EMIS team in contributing to those results. So I really want to thank them for everything they've done. Um, the overall business is performing well and predictably. Uh, the first half of 21, we were still emerging really from COVID and the challenges of getting on customer sites, that type of thing. But certainly in the second half of 21, we felt much more back to business as usual. And actually, when we reflect on or look forward in 2022, we're definitely back into business as usual mode, which is really, really encouraging. We obviously had a great contribution with our pinnacle systems for the immunization program, which has been highlighted by us as a group. Um, and I think we've we've managed to record over 100 million vaccinations uh, by now. So that's really been great. But the success has been across the business. So we've managed to move forward positively, especially on the EMIS Enterprise side, which we grew uh, at double digits. And also the profitability in that side is improving as well. So overall, great contribution from the team, good progress across our care settings, a special highlight for Pinnacle, who did a, an outstanding job for us. And, uh, and again, results above expectation, which is a lovely place to be. Uh, and could you give us a little bit more detail at the divisional level? Yeah, so um, on EMIS Health side, it was more about consolidation and about our EMIS X strategy there. So we continue to improve efficiency, we're modernising systems, we're building those interoperability layers we talked about a year ago, so FIRE, for example. So we're doing a lot of infrastructure work there, um, very high recurring revenues for us in that, that side of the business, of course, and lots of continuity with our customers, working very closely with them as we emerge from the, the pandemic. So I would say a solid performance in Hemus Health, exactly what we expected. Um, and we're pleased with that. On the enterprise side, definitely uh, growing nicely for us in double digits, as I mentioned earlier, and now accounting for over 40% of our profit on the enterprise side, which is a very strong number for us. So we've got good operating leverage there. And the modern areas we are building, such as EMSX Analytics, um, those give us good potential for growth and additional profitability over time. Um, strong performance in the pharmacy segment. Our digital segment went forward. It's very modest for us, but improved from revenue profitability, which is really, really good. But overall, strong across the board. Enterprise, we were expecting that growth, now beginning to perform in a way that we're excited about. We continue to invest in EMSX analytics on that side and EMSX, that modernization, efficiency approach on EMS Health. So, so good, you know, very complimentary. We manage the group to the overall business result for shareholders, of course, but very encouraged on the enterprise side and delighted with that predictable performance in Human's Health. And could you talk us through some of the opportunities you see across the connected care spectrum? Definitely. It's, uh, it is, it's really interesting. I think there's probably two things to highlight. So in England, the whole strategy for integrated care systems. So this is where... England is going to manage in a more joined up way across 42 geographies and uh, CEOs of those businesses have been appointed on a regular basis now across the NHS and what's very clear is having that interoperability between systems that are installed um, is very important because those systems will not all be replaced of course so it's all about making sure that the data moves across especially with the patient record at the centre and that's been our mission for some time. So we talk about connected care, integrated care, very similar in concept, of course. So that strategy, very, very important. And I'll just give you one example of a clever thing that we've, we've managed to do in that connected care strategy is we now have connected the GP practices directly into the community pharmacy because the NHS has got an ambition to move 100 million primary care appointments from GP practice into the community pharmacy consulting rooms 
And we have a system that we've built, part of Ebus X, that now allows that to be automatically sent across to the community pharmacy if that's what the policy of the local GP practice is. And it's got a snappy title called GPCPCS, but basically it's connectivity between the, the primary care GP practice and the community pharmacy. So that's just one classic example of connected care. Then if you think about other emerging things in that connected care space, it's all about data connecting. And so the strategy we had, we quietly got on with starting in 2019 of building EMSX analytics. So pulling data together from different care settings, having the patient at the center of that, allowing clinicians to look at patients at risk post COVID. So there's categories of patients that our clinicians are worried about that need to be looked after and screened because of the delays because of COVID, understandably with lockdowns and such like. So connected care in, the, in that example, GP to community pharmacy, but connected care and data, very important and, and is looking like a strong opportunity for us. So just to highlight a couple, lots of things going on with the business. We continue to build on those long-term point of care systems we've got but building out these new exciting capabilities, especially in the data analytics space, the digital space, you know, lots going on there. So, uh, yeah, good opportunities, lots going on. We're incredibly busy, but it's positive busy. And we're definitely seeing the NHS emerge now from pure pandemic focus into post-pandemic patient-centric focus, which is, is uh, very important for the nation. You recently made a, a couple of small acquisitions. Um, could you talk through the rationale for those and also any further M&A plans you might have? Yeah, so very exciting. So part of our strategy this year, I'm calling it moving year. That's the internal term. So we're, we're moving to the next stage of the business. We're building on those great EMIS X um, uh, programs we've been building for some time. We're now supplementing and using our cash for some bolt-ons. So we bought a company called Edenbridge which is uh, definitely in a new space sitting alongside uh, EMSX Analytics. It allows you know, predetermined dashboards, providing clinical insights across um, uh, the ICS, the care settings. Um, a lovely company built, um, husband and wife combination actually, ex-employees from EMIS, funded by another employee from EMIS who did well at the original float. So they are, if you like, extended family. They've been part of our partner program. We've kept um, a good eye on them and we felt it was a great time to invite them back into the firm. So that's really exciting. And with our scale of our 100 people that are out visiting customers, either by video or physically, um, uh, every day in the NHS, we believe we can take their great capability and scale it really quickly. Definite fit with Emus X Analytics. We were very excited to close that deal. And it's a modest, modest size of company but we see good potential. And a bit like Pinnacle was a modest company and then we've expanded that and we, we moved our capability there. We see Pinnacle as great potential for us. So we're delighted to have them on board. Great dashboards sitting alongside Emus X Analytics. So that's those. And then I think my career is now complete. I have bought a company called 14 Fish. Um, and 14 Fish, unusually named, but this is a capability about looking at clinicians and their professional appraisals. So it's an online system, cloud enabled, that tracks the appraisal systems for GPs or for other clinicians, not just in primary care, but also in acute care. It also involves people like practice nurses, uh, et cetera. So this is about the professional development and the formal tracking of people within the clinical system in the UK that need to show they've got appraisals and have those documented. Um, this again, been built by a small team led by a, a former GP and real good technical lead. Um, we really like this space as part of one of our digital credentials. And what we think is exciting, and again, I use Pinnacle as an example, we see this core business of recording these systems, uh, recording these appraisals for individuals. We can scale that. But we also think there's potential to use this as part of overall workforce planning for the NHS, which is something the ICSs need. So matching demand with skills and helping with that development of the skills plan for the NHS. So that's a secondary ambition we have, not for today, but for tomorrow. Um, the core business is really good, um, a great cultural fit for us. 
another digital credential, another opportunity for us to build relationships with the clinicians directly, but also you know, scale that as part of EMSX analytics, but also on the traditional human health side. So another, it's a modest company, but we're excited about it and we love the cultural fit of the, the people. So both of these we're looking at as really nice capabilities, real companies making real profits with the potential to scale and utilize our excellent channel into customers to go a bit quicker. So uh, yeah, exciting times. In terms of futures, we're busy. So we, we are now officially have a bolt-on program. I've always talked about the potential. We're executing a plan right now. Um, I definitely can't say what else we're up to because it's a competitive world out there. We need to be careful, but we're executing a plan. So I would expect over the next couple of years, I'd be hopeful of having some more lookalikes to these size of companies. We're real skilled people, great technical people, great clinical people, really clever value propositions in, a, in associated spaces that we operate in today. And also with the opportunity to accelerate our EMIS X analytics area by bringing in a few extra, if you like, well, actually bolt on capabilities is the right phrase. So yeah, so we're busy um, and we're definitely committed now to, to spend some of that cash or maybe all of that cash in a very wise way where we get a good value for money, good potential and obviously accretive to shareholders. So uh, yeah, exciting, it's good. And our team like, the, like what's going on and um, we're pleased to announce the second acquisition as part of, of this, which is the 14 fish one. And finally, could you um, give us an update on current trading and where you see the company going on a longer term basis? Sure. So it's so a good start to the year. What I like is predictable. So I'm entering my fifth year now um, uh, here at EMIS and I like where we are today for this year. I'm expecting a good year, if not a strong year. Um, the early signs are very encouraging. We've got clear goals of what we want to achieve from a sales, marketing, customer perspective. Those are bang on track, which is good. Um, so I like where we, we started the year and we've now got this excitement of some extra things coming in um, for new capabilities, which will motivate our, our team. We like to see new things developing. Um, we're also managing down some of the older portfolio we have. So our resale partners were gently bringing that down, it's low margin tactical uh, business and we're replacing that with higher margin, if you like, more strategic business. So that's a managed plan. So we've got a bit of that going on this year, portfolio refresh, if you use that term. Um, so that's, that's been managed nicely and we expect um, you know, at the adjusted profit level, the margins to expand. We've got that long-term ambition of getting towards 30%. This time out, we're just under 26% for 2021, and we'd be hopeful and confident that we can, again, move that forward in, in 2022 and beyond. So that's our ambition we set out um, a few years ago, and we're very focused on delivering our promises. That's, that's important to us. Um, in terms of the, if you like, the midterm, good. You know, there are, our traditional core point-of-care systems are going well, being modernised, updated, more and more cloud enabled. And we're thinking about, you know, can we accelerate some of that cloud enablement work? So that's consideration we're thinking about, you know, uh, towards the half this year, should we do something there or, or, or are we happy with the speed we're going at? So we're always challenging ourselves. Um, but we, we see great potential, great building blocks. The new organic solutions are coming through now, still modest for us. I don't want to over-exaggerate where we are, but good and totally relevant. This data analytics, patient insight, we're seeing it everywhere. We've converted a high number of customers now. So those pilots we talked about last year in EMIS X Analytics are now customers. So we've got 20 odd customers. That's evidence that we've got paying customers that are really interested in using those tools. So um, I'm very confident about the midterm for the business. I like what we're doing. I like the progress we're making uh, organically from growth perspective, organically from efficiency perspective. We're now adding on these bolt-on opportunities where we see a strategic fit. That's exciting. And, and we want to continue to build that growth momentum 
and margin expansion we talked about a few years ago. And I think we're bang on track. So um, yeah, no, I feel good about it. Um, early in the year always, but I like the signs. We know what we should be looking like at this stage and we're definitely in the right place at the moment. Tons to do, of course. We're only 10 weeks or so into the year, but yeah, it's, it's a good place. I feel good about 2022. And we're definitely focused on building 23 and beyond in parallel. So uh, yeah, good progress. Great. Well, thank you for the update, Andy. Delighted. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to see you again. Thank you.